Uh, welcome to the Coach's Corner with Winning with Wisdom. Where our motto is either you're winning with wisdom or you're losing with foolishness. And um, today for our topic of discussion, uh, we want to deal with all the answers but no solutions. All the answers, but no solutions. <clears throat> Our scripture reference is going to be coming from Proverbs 30, the book of wisdom. Uh, verses 12 through 14, it says, There is a generation rising that considers themselves to be pure in their own eyes. Yet they are morally filthy, unwashed, and unclean. Verse 13, there is a generation rising that is so filled with pride. They think they are superior and look down on others. And verse 14, there is a generation rising that uses their words like swords to cut and slash those that are different. They would devour the poor, the needy, and the afflicted off the face of the earth. <clears throat> and today I wanna deal with that generation. I wanna deal with that generation. If you have any youth, teenagers, parent, uh, tap them into this, all those that are on our team, uh, you know, that are on, um, that are connected to us, that are in the mentorship program, that are sons and daughters, uh, make sure you're taking heed of this and you uh, and you sharing the information. Um, each one teach one and empower one. <clears throat> but we want to deal with this generation it talks about here in the text today. And the topic that we have is they have all the answers, but no solutions. There's power with that within itself having all the answers, but no solutions. This is for those that always got something to say, but never have nothing solved. Always got something to say, but never have a problem solved. There's nothing, nothing solved in their life. Got an answer for everything, <clears throat> but don't have a solution for nothing. And that's two different things. Do you understand? An answer for everything, but no solution. Do you understand? When you have a solution, you won't even have to give a verbal answer. Because the solution, meaning the problem solved, is the answer. We're going to deal with something deep today. Because you don't want to be a person that has all the answers, but no solution. You always show up with a bunch of mouth, with a bunch of answers, with a bunch of what should be done or what shouldn't be done. I know what to do. I know what I need to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get to it. Those are all answers, but no solutions. Do you understand? All the answers, but no solutions. I heard that before. Do you understand? <laughs> oh, the guy, you preaching to the choir? Well, 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 where's the solutions? All the answers, but no solutions. Let's deal with this. And, 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 and that's a sad reality for a lot of people. You, you can't live off the answers, but not the solutions. Your life, your success, your degree, your education, your breakthrough, the success of your ministry, your business, your marriage. You know what I'm saying? Anything that you want to establish in life, your gifting, your anointing is connected to your solutions. Not your answers, your solutions. <clears throat> Do you understand? Your solutions. We can, you can give answers all day, but still don't have the problem solved. Do you understand? A lot of people always got the answer after the fact anyway, but still no solutions. Still no solutions. Yeah, a lot of people always come up with the answers of what should have been done or what shouldn't have been done after the fact anyway. Do you understand? That's after the fact. Come up with the answer and a solution before. Do you understand? And begin to initiate the solutions. 
Do you understand? To the questions. Over to God, my mama, to the questions. And it will leave them, and it won't leave them unanswered with the solution. So Proverbs 30 and 12, chapter 30, I'm reading out of the um, Passionate Translation, verse 12 says, There is a generation that considers themselves to be pure in their own eyes, yet they are morally filthy, unwashed, and unclean. Man, this is a rough generation. Pure in their own eyes, believing that everything they do is right. Believing that they, they, that they BM don't stink. Believing that they got everything together, that they know it all, being pure in their own eyes. Do you understand? Being pure in their, they they don't have, they don't have divine vision. They can't see what God is doing. They can only see themselves. They can't even hear what God is doing because they're pure in their own eyes. They're blind to the realities of life. They're blind to the facts of life, and they're stuck on themselves stuck on themselves can be in total error but still don't see it <clears throat> totally wrong but still don't get it and still trying to justify it we're going to deal with that in a minute so <clears throat> one of the things would be uh young folks hear this hear this hear this quit giving two cent answers two cent answers to hundred dollar questions quit giving two cent answers to hundred dollar questions do you understand? That's a two cent answer. Quit giving two cent answers to hundred dollar questions. That answer, it won't, that won't resolve nothing. That's having the answers, but no solutions. That's that after the fact stuff. Do you understand? They call it Monday morning quarterbacking, where you can say what you, what place should have been called, what should have been done, what I should have did, who I shouldn't have hang with, hung with. You knew that in the beginning. Do you understand? But why didn't you do it? Or that you knew you should have went to class. You knew you should have stayed committed. You knew you should have took care of that. You knew you should have cleaned that. You knew you should have kept your mouth shut. You knew you shouldn't have got involved with that. But but listen, do you understand? So now you're giving a two cent answer to a hundred dollar question. Do you understand? Your answer can't even get you out of the problem. Your answer can't even get you out of the dilemma. There are some of you that are in such bad shape and bad condition with so much debt over your head. Some of you got bonds over your head. You know what I'm saying? You got so much that you've got yourself into. And now the only thing you can give is a two cent answer to a hundred dollar question. Do you understand? What happened to all your money? Why are you about to get kicked out? Why are you about to get evicted? Do you understand? Why are you in jail? Why are you in this predicament? Why are you pregnant again? Do you understand? Why are you here? But God, what, what is this? Do you understand? What are you doing? Two cent answers now to a hundred dollar question. Do you understand? It's a two cent answer. Couldn't get you out of nothing. Couldn't resolve nothing. Two cent answers only get you in the problems. And two cent answers only keep you in the problems. But it's got to be a breaking. There's got to be a place of humility. A place of humility. We're going to get to that in a minute. But listen. So, and another thing when you give two cent answers is when you say one thing and you do another. And that's a sad reality of this generation. You say one thing and you do another. Do you understand? When Matthew chapter 5 verse 37, it says, let your yes be yes and let your no's be no. I mean, be a man or woman of your word. Do you understand? Be committed to your word. Do you understand? Or to God, that gives you value. That's all you got in life, in many cases, is your word. Do you understand? Your word that I'm going to pay you back. Your word that I'm going to be there faithful. Your word that I'm going to be committed uh, to death, do us apart. Your word, the only thing you got is your word that I'm not going to do that no more. That I'm going to be more responsible with my money. Your word is all you got. Your word is, you know what? I got a felony on me, but just, just give me opportunity. Just trust me. Just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. All you got is your word. Your word is, yeah, yeah, I filed bankruptcy because I, I wasn't paying my debtors. I was trying to get away and trying to be conniving and, and slick and trying to duck and dodge my creditors. But now I, I need something for me and my children, for me and my family. All you got is your word. Do you understand? You stole from them before, but now you want them to believe you and to trust you. All you got is your word. Whatever you do, don't lose your word. 
Do you understand? Don't have a two cent answer for hundred dollar questions. That means you don't have a word. Your word has no valuable. Your word is equivalent to the scriptures say a poor man's wisdom is despised. Meaning it don't matter what a poor man says, people will despise it. He can have all the answers, Do you all the answers, but because his life or her life doesn't represent solutions, nobody listens to them. Nobody listens to them because they got a two cent answer for a hundred dollar question. Come on, my, my, my. man, don't use your word. Don't lose your word. Whatever you say you're going to do, do it. Do you understand? Don't never, don't lose your word. If you say you coming, go. Do you understand? If you say you not, don't. If you whatever, be a man or woman of your word. Your word is valuable. Do you understand? So therefore, that means I need to be a man or woman of action. There needs to be an action connected to everything I say. Do you understand? Lord, I got an action to do exactly what I said I was going to do. My, my, my. That gives your life value. That gives your life value. When you can be trusted, your word has trust connected to it. It has dependability connected to it. Value. Prosperity is connected to it. Do you understand? Glory to God. Overcoming is connected to it. Do you, success is connected to it. High achieving is connected to it. Glory to God. My, 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 your word. Next point. Just because you talking loud and repeating the same thing doesn't solve nothing. Talking loud and saying nothing. Just because you talking loud to make a point, it doesn't solve nothing. Do you? It doesn't change the dynamic of nothing. Do you understand? So, and many times people are talking loud is because they're trying to hide behind the fact that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Do you understand? Because when you did what you're supposed to do, the solutions will speak for itself. Come on. The results will speak for themselves. Go back through a few lessons of mine and tap into that results over excuses. Results over excuses and connect to that. You can connect with it on YouTube or Facebook. Listen, because you need to realize the results speak for themselves. People will pay you for your results. Do you understand? They, your wealth, your harvest is connected to your results. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Laborers are people that have results that are, <laughs> that are result oriented. Here it is. Here it is. So talking loud, saying nothing. You can keep repeating the same thing. What, what does it mean? What does it mean? Your actions ain't connected to what you're saying. Do you understand? Well, I'm, I'm speaking those, thinking into existence. You're not speaking nothing into existence if you're not putting some hands with it. Faith without works is dead. You got to work out what you're saying. Do you understand? Well, I got a dream. Your dream need a job. Your dream need work. It need consistent work. It need discipline. Do you understand? Or quit talking about it and let it manifest through some work. Put your hands to the plow of your dream. Put the hands to the plow of your marriage. Put the hands to the plow of you getting that degree. You getting your education. You getting your GED. Put the hands to the plow. Do you understand? Of you being that father of the year, the mother of the year, the husband of the year, the wife of the year. Put your hands to the plow. The grandmother of the year. Come on, Lord. The, the, the doctor of the year, the lawyer, the judge of the year. The Put your hands to the plow. You got to put forth the work. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Do you understand? We live in a generation that got all the answers, but no solutions. Listen, the next point is whenever you justify failure with what you think is a legitimate reason, you will continue to fail. Whenever you justify your failure, do you understand? With what you think is a legitimate reason, do you understand? With what you think, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man or a woman, but the end thereof are the ways of death, failure, defeat. Do you understand? When you think that you 
come up with a legitimate reason, a legitimate excuse for why you failed or why you're losing in life. Why you didn't do what you said you were supposed to do. Why you didn't do what you was told to do. Do you understand? How you going to be in a, of in authority when you, ain't, you, when you don't know how to submit and obey and be under authority? You, understand? you, ain't, you haven't mastered that. Do you understand? So, so, so you will be a hireling. You, you, come on, my, 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 you usurp authority. You, glory to God, you will be in a false sense of authority. You'll be, a, you'll be illegitimate. You won't be authentic in authority. Do you understand? Who is you over? Who, what are you doing? Who, who listening to that? People follow results. People follow results. Do you understand? People follow solutions. Glory to God. Do you understand? Here it is. So never justify defeat. That's why we bring you winning with wisdom. Do you understand? Because we lost with foolishness and we missed it. We messed up. We blew it. We were dead wrong. But we end up in our mind. We're not going that route anymore. Do you understand? Got to come to the place of humility that I don't have the answers. That blessed are they that are hunger and thirst after righteousness, the right solutions, the right answers. Man, what should I do? How can I drive a car like that? How can I uh, live in a home like that? Man, how can I be the coach? How can I be in charge? How can I get on the team? How can I get my degree? How can I write my book? How can I be a songwriter? How can I get my gift out of me? Come on, somebody. How can I get my vision off paper and get it to manifest into my life? Or to God, how can I go from being broken, being not enough to having more than enough? How can my financial portfolio change? Lord God, how can my network, what is your value? How much are you worth? Well, how can I increase my net worth? Listen, here it is. We get ready to wrap this up. We're still in Proverbs uh, 30. Um, in verse 13 now, it says, There is a generation rising that is so filled with pride. There it is. They think they are superior and look down on others. How you gonna walk in the room like that? Even got songs. I look like a chick when I walk. Up on you. How you gonna come in thinking you better? You listen, listen. Let's. God said He hates the look of pride. He hates the look of pride. Do you understand? He hates the look of pride. That's a position of disrespect. Do you understand? That's an attitude of can't nobody tell me nothing. And like, and, and, and like Mama used to say. And you don't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. <laughs> oh, fuck. Boy, they said some stuff. <laughs> wow. All the answers, but no solutions. All the answers, but no solutions. Why aren't you listening to them? Why are you talking about they can't tell me nothing? I know what I'm doing. You don't know what you're doing. You need to be humble and sit down. You are messing over your, your life. You are messing over your purpose. Do you understand? Here it is. You're going to get to a counterfeit destiny. A counterfeit destiny. My, my, my. Let, verse 14, and I'm, I'm, I'm finished. It says, there's a generation rising that uses their words like swords to cut and slash those who are different. Meaning, only thing this generation wanna hear and want you to tell them is what they already know. And many of them, what they already, oh, <laughs> don't know much of nothing. Got a lot of it from, from, from videos, from songs. Because, listen, listen, man, oh man. And wanna slash out at somebody that's different of, Bringing them a different standard. Some of you are so disrespectful to your parents. And the Bible says, honor your mother and your father. That your days may be long. Do you understand? Because when you do not honor them, you shorten, come on, the purpose and the manifestation of the good that could be happening in your life. Do you understand? You slow up your progress. 
because of your level and your area of disrespect. Do you understand? Because of your disrespect and dishonor. They gonna come to you with something because they see the bigger picture. Do you understand? They see the bigger picture. Father, children are like arrows in the hands of their fathers. The Bible say, do not despise your, 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 your mother and your father's wisdom. Listen, listen, listen. Honor authority. Submit unto those, obey those that have rule and authority over you. In the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Do you understand? God is trying to get you somewhere. Come to the conclusion. Man, hey, what do I need to do and do it? Do you understand? Listen, as we wrap this up, I'm having all the answers but no solutions. Glory to God. Listen, listen, man. Am I, am I, am I? This is Dr. Sullivan with the Coach's Corner. With winning with wisdom. Hey, peace and love. Till next time. Let's do this.